All right, everybody, today marks the end of announcement season for Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. The final scare zone, Enter the Blum House, has been announced. We already knew this scare zone was coming. Obviously, you could see progress in the park, even props that indicate what we are going to be seeing in that scare zone. But it was announced regardless, so you know what that means. It's time to get into my Halloween Horror Nights 33 hype list for both houses and scare zones. And due to the nature of these videos, I just want to issue a disclaimer before we get into this. For one, this is a subjective list. This is my personal hype list. These picks are just based on my personal opinion, my personal taste, what I like in haunted houses and scare zones. And just because a house or scare zone appears at the bottom of my hype list does not mean I am not hyped for them. It's happened where things on the bottom of my hype list end up becoming one of my favorite things by the end of the event. These lists are just for fun. Gets us more hyped, gets us more excited talking about the haunted houses and scare zones coming to this year's event. So let's treat it as such. But anyways, we have a lot to talk about, so I want to waste no more time and jump right into my Halloween Horror Nights 33 haunted house and scare zone hype list. We have 10 houses to go through, and at the bottom of the list, unfortunately, is Insidious the Further. Right off the bat, I think that this is going to be one of, if not the scariest house coming to the event this year. I can't say the Insidious movies are like my favorite horror movies or anything, but I do think they're going to do a great job in bringing the further to life, really creating that creepy atmosphere that's so well known from the films and really acting as a celebration of the franchise. We're getting the red face demon. We're getting the bride in black. We're getting the man who can't breathe key face, all the characters we know from the insidious franchise. And I think that's really going to help this house in being something truly unique, especially when compared to past insidious houses. But I think it's just a classic case of there are nine other houses that I am more excited for than Insidious. It's more of a taste thing than anything, and unfortunately something had to go at the number 10 spot. So it is Insidious the further, but I do have high hopes for this house. I think it's going to be a house that blends the scary and the scenic really well and creates a really unique atmosphere. Again, probably the scariest house of the event this year. Now moving over to number 9, we have our first original on the list, and it is Goblin's Feast. I think there are some really interesting set possibilities here. I really loved the nosedive into high fantasy that we got last year with Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate, and I'm really interested to see that concept without the nostalgic elements from that defunct attraction. Really why it's so low on the list is just because there's still a little bit of uncertainty as for the tone of this house, what this house is really going to bring forward. We did get a Discover Universal podcast for this house, but I didn't really get a whole lot of horror nights from that podcast. So so I don't know how much of that is going to bleed in to the haunted house itself. If we're going just based on the podcast, I'd expect something a little more campy. I think even more campy than Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. And I'm all cool with that. I love campy houses. I love goofy houses. I think that stuff's great, but I just want to know more about it. And that's why it's sitting here at number nine. Also another case of there are more houses, especially in the original category that I'm just more excited for than Goblin's Feast. Moving up to number eight, we have our big experimental IP for this this year, A Quiet Place. I think this house can have some really big, really grand set pieces, really bring those scenes from the movie to life in a way that only Horror Nights can. But I can't lie to you, I'm both excited and nervous for how they're going to execute the audio in this house. Seems like they're really trying new things here, really want to make this an authentic experience to the films. I think if they nail this, this could be an absolutely phenomenal house, but it could also be one that requires perfect timing to get that experience. While this can be said for any house at HHN, timing is very important in your perception of a haunted house. I think it is especially important here due to the nature of the audio and how the scares work in those movies. So for those reasons, A Quiet Place sits at number eight. Number seven, we have the return of a tried and true IP at Halloween Horror Nights, and that is Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines. I'm really curious to see where they go with this story. It seems like a blend of The Bride of Frankenstein Lives and Legends Collide with the twist of an all-female cast and a bunch of new characters. I really hope they do things to differentiate these characters from their male counterparts, give them their own identity, give them some really cool moments in this house. I also think this house is going to bring that gothic atmosphere that is so signature to the Universal Monsters. We do already know quite a bit of what to expect from these Universal Monsters houses. So for those who are saying it's a bit tired, they've run it on a bit too long, I understand. But for me, I think the Universal Monsters are a staple of the horror genre, and I can't wait to see them back at HHN this year. Moving up to number six, I think we have the biggest wild card out of any of the houses this year, and that is the Museum Deadly Exhibits. 
We know pretty much nothing about this house except that it takes place in a museum, the rotting stone is the exhibit, and that's about it. And honestly, that's all I really want to know about this house. I feel like this house could tell a really, really compelling story if done correctly. I can't wait to see what they do with the museum setting, how they integrate some really creative scares within it. And in general, my interest is peaked with the mystery of the rotting stone. What is it? Where does it come from? We'll just have to see when the event begins, but right here, number six is the museum deadly exhibits. All right, just cracking the top five, we have a fan favorite original from Universal Studios Hollywood, Monstros, the monsters of Latin America. Orlando has kind of dipped their toes into Latin folklore as themes for haunted houses, but this year they're going all in, bringing the characters from Hollywood's house over to the East Coast. If this is anything like the Hollywood version, I'm expecting these landscapes to really come to life to create a really scenic haunted house. But one thing I also know about Monstros is that they don't skimp out on the scares, so I'm expecting a very scary haunted house on top of the great scenery. While they would have preferred they adapt some new characters, some of the ones they haven't done in Hollywood before, I'm excited to see Orlando's take on this. I think Orlando is going to do things a bit bigger than Universal Studios Hollywood. I hope it doesn't rely too much on that Hollywood house. I would like to see them adapt some scenes differently, but honestly, I'm stoked to see this as someone who didn't get to see the Hollywood version. I'm excited that this is my first introduction to these characters and i hope it really delivers all right moving up to number four we have what i think is going to be the dark horse original of the year and that is triplets of terror i said it when the house was announced i think this house is going to become the fan favorite original this year the one that catches everyone by surprise i think the museum has some potential to do that as well but i really think triplets of terror is going to bring something the fans are going to eat up it's an original slasher with three all new characters and it's purposely how Universal hasn't said a word about, making me very excited for what they have in store for Triplets of Terror. I think this is going to be our overly gory, over-to-the-top house, very much in the vein of the slashers that seem to inspire it. But in general, I think it's going to be a really cool one. It's going to bring something all new to the table, while also giving us the feel of previous slasher houses, both IP and original. All right, coming into the top three, we have the fan favorite scare zone turned haunted house with Major Sweets Candy Factory. I have a very special attachment to Halloween Horror Nights 31. It was my first year going to the event, and one offering at that event that I really fell in love with was the Sweet Revenge Scare Zone. That being said, I'm super excited to see this prequel to the Sweet Revenge Scare Zone play out in a haunted house. Very excited to see what they do with the sets in here, considering we got a little taste of that in the Sweet Revenge Scare Zone. I have a feeling this house will be really stimulating to the senses, lots to look at, probably some fun smells in here as well. I know it hasn't been a whole lot of time since we've seen Major Sweets at Halloween Horror Nights, but he made a pretty big impact on the fandom. Obviously, he's getting a house after only two years. Taking the silver trophy at my number two spot is my most anticipated IP for this year's event, and it is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I know a lot of people are dogging on this movie coming to Halloween Horror Nights. A lot of people did not like that Frozen Empire film. And while I understand it wasn't like a perfect movie to me or anything, I just I'm super excited to see the Ghostbusters at Halloween Horror Nights. I've loved getting to see the Ghostbusters reappear at Universal Studios Florida throughout the summer. And I feel like the icing on that cake is going to be going through another Ghostbusters house at HHN. Also, I'm excited to see how they do up the sets and special effects for this house. The last time they did Ghostbusters, it was a very special effects heavy house and i think that's going to be the same for this year i think this is going to be our big effects based house at the event and if the foo booths are any indication for the level of theming we're going to get within the sets of ghostbusters frozen empire consider me hyped for this haunted house. Overall, I think this house is going to be a slam dunk. I think this is going to be the fun house for this year. A good introduction for those who have never been to Halloween Horror Nights before. And overall, just a good time with everyone's favorite supernatural exterminators. Well, here we are at number one. And if you've been paying attention, you might know that my number one most anticipated haunted house for this year's HHN is Slaughter Cinema 2. Really, I didn't need to know any of the concepts, and I still would have probably had this at my number one. But now that we know that Heavy Metal Hell 3D, Mardi Gras Murders, an untitled Christmas film, all of these things are going to be featured in Slaughter Cinema 2, it just makes me more excited for this haunted house. I'm a big sucker also for anthology storytelling, whether it's through movies, books, or haunted houses. So I'm excited to see that format done with the signature charm of Slaughter Cinema. These movies are over the top. They're darkly funny. They're absolutely ridiculous. But that's why we love them. 
them. And I love haunted houses that do funny things, ridiculous things, over the top things. So Slaughter Cinema has to be at my number one most anticipated haunted house for this year. Now moving on to the scare zones, these we know a little more about because we can see construction going on in the park. And at the bottom of my list, number five for scare zones is Duality of Fear. Excited we're gonna be getting more icons and another icon scare zone. And I really like the idea of the split path scare zone. I hope they really do it up with the lighting and even the characters they have roaming around in these areas. I really hope the presence of Sinister and Surreal make this scare zone a lot like what happened with the Dr. Oddfellow zone last year. But for right now, especially because we don't have any detail in the park right now, I'm gonna have to put this at number five. Moving up to number four, we have the scare zone overtaken by Surreal, and that is Demon Queens. A lot like Duality of Fear, we don't have a lot to go off of when it comes to the Scare Zone, but with the little details we do have about the Scare Zone, I'm pretty interested. This zone is set for the Hollywood area. My big complaint with last year's Hollywood Zone, Dark Zodiac, was just that there wasn't a whole lot going on. Yes, you had plenty of characters roaming around and they were doing a fantastic job, but there really wasn't a whole lot for them to play off of. So I really hope Demon Queens utilizes this area, brings some pretty interesting set pieces, and really builds up that surreal character, giving her an icon zone worth remembering. But let's not forget about the other icon this year, Sinister and their scare zone, which takes my number three spot, Torture Fair. Overall, while we do have a little more detail than Demon Queens and Duality of Fear, we still don't know a whole lot about this scare zone, especially where it fits within the lore. For me, I think the setting of the Renaissance Fear, even without the sinister icon connection, makes this scare zone really compelling. And I can't wait to see what they do with these torture devices. I hope they really don't hold back with them. As crazy as it sounds, part of the fun with these torture devices is how gory and gruesome they are. So I hope they really lean into that with the torture fair scare zone. Coming in at number two, we have our one and only IP-based scare zone coming to this year's event, Enter the Blumhouse. As I record this, the scare zone was just announced today, announced with big air quotes. Again, we've known about this zone for a while. But for me, I am excited to see this Blumhouse scare zone brought to life. I'm not the biggest Blumhouse fan in the world. I think some of their movies are kind of hit or miss, but I think the characters are great and perfect for Halloween Horror Nights. I'm excited to once again see The Grabber and The Butcher, who are featured back in 2022. I'm excited to see The Purge brought to life in this scare zone, as well as Megan, because everybody loves Megan, right? I wouldn't be surprised if they also brought some surprise characters from the Blumhouse back catalog for this scare zone. But even if we take the Blumhouse scare zone at face value with the details they've given us, I think we're in for a fun time. And overall, I think the scare zone is going to be very fun. I think it's going to be a large scale celebration of this movie studio that has brought so much to the Halloween Horn event. If you've been counting the whole time, that just leaves number one. My most anticipated scare zone for this year's event is Swamp of the Undead. There are so many set pieces going out for this scare zone, and I'm just really excited to see how they bring the swamp to life in Central Park. Every time I walk through the scare zone, I feel like there are more details added, more things to look at, more things to pick apart. Central Park scare zones are usually very scenic. They have a lot of advantages when it comes to that, but I think this scare zone is also gonna deliver on those scares that you want from a scare zone. It feels fleshed out, and I think that's what makes it my most anticipated zone of this year. And that's it when it comes to my hype list. Let me know down in the comments below, what are your hype lists for this year? Or even if you don't have a full list written out, what are just your most anticipated haunted houses and scare zones for HHN Orlando this year? Stay tuned to the channel for more updates regarding this year's event. If you like videos about Halloween Horror Nights and Universal of the past, present, and future, including this year's event, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I, of course, want to thank you for watching this video, sticking around through the crazy announcement season we've had this year, and I'll, of course, see you in the next one. But until then, stay spooky and take care, everybody.